Hey everyone, John here with Photography Life, and today we're gonna to talk about the adjustment brush in Lightroom. Now, we're just gonna go over the basics. We're not really gonna go into a lot of detail, but to, we will cover that in a future video. Today, we're basically gonna talk about what it is and how you use it to edit your images. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom here. I have this gray image pulled up, and that's just gonna help us kind of see what's happening with this brush when we use it. We'll also use it in a real image today like we're actually editing. So the first step is to go into the develop module, which is where I'm at. And under the histogram here, you'll see we have these different tools and it's the far right tool. You see adjustment brush, if you hit K, that's gonna pull up the brush or you can just click on it here as well. So now we have this palette of uh, options that opened up and let's kind of go through these before we start using it. Now on the top here we have mask and that's basically just a new brush. So uh, you'll see how that works in a little bit here. The effect, uh, we can have these drop down effects that come by default in Lightroom. So if we wanted to go in and uh, use this burn tool, it's basically gonna adjust the exposure down by uh, 0.3 stops. Whereas if we use the dodge tool, it's going to increase the exposure by 0.25 stops. You can also go manually adjust these, so you can change this if you want to. You can uh, combine multiple ones into one brush, but for now, let's just stick with the, uh, let's do an exposure adjustment, and that's gonna be by default minus one stop. Now we also have a color change. You can go in and add color to your brush. That's a little more advanced than we're gonna cover today, but feel free to play with that if you want to. And then down here in the brush section, we have a few different options. So we have brush A and brush B, which have different settings. So if you wanted to have different brushes, you could always go in here and you can see our brush over here on the uh, gray part. Uh, a, well, you can't see it right now, but A is gonna look like this and B is gonna look like this. So if you need different sizes, different feathering, flow, whatever, you can preset those here. And then once you have some brush strokes applied, you can use this erase brush We'll cover that in just a little bit here. So let's stick with brush A. Uh, size, you can see it affects the overall size of the brush. Feather is gonna affect this outer circle here. So when you drag that down, it's gonna make the brush harder and more defined. Uh, if you stick with 100, it's going to be a soft brush. Flow affects how the brush is applied to your image. And uh, if you do like a 50% flow, it's basically going to just cover the image at a rate of 50% instead of just a solid 100%. And you can, it's additive as well. So if you want to uh, go over the same area multiple times, it's gonna add up until it eventually has a 100% coverage. Uh, let's keep that at 100 for now. Auto mask, I will show you how that works in a more advanced uh, video. But basically what it does is it only keeps your brush inside uh, inside the line so you're not applying it everywhere. It's going to figure out maybe you just want it inside of um, say the sky and not on top of a mountain and it'll try to keep it inside the sky the best it can. And density is basically, it's kind of similar to flow but it's basically just going to uh, determine how much goes onto your image, how much it affects your image, but it's not additive. So you can't like brush over the same area and have the effect uh, get multiplied. So let's go ahead and just start out. It's much, e much easier to show you how these work than to talk about it. So we have our brush set down here to 100% feather, 100% flow, 100% density. That's gonna show us exactly what's going on. Uh, you can see I can change the size here by uh, using my fingers on the trackpad. I'm doing that on a Mac. Uh, you can also do that with the mouse so you don't have to change the size over here. You can just use a scroll wheel on your mouse if you want to. So let's change the exposure on this image. I'm just gonna click and drag and you can see what's happening here. We are getting this darker part of the image and that's because we're dropping the exposure by one stop. Now, if we go in here and change the feather, let's change it down to zero and you see now my brush is just a solid circle. You can see how much different that looks compared to when I had the feather at 100%. Now let's put the, uh, let's keep the feather where it is and let's put the flow down to say 46 and you'll be able to see what happens here. You see it kind of goes on but as I go over it more and more it gets darker and darker until it eventually looks like this over here. So that's what flow does. And then finally let's put the flow back up to 100 and density to, to about the same as before as the flow was. 
you can do this and it doesn't go on as dark as this does um, but it's not additive so the more I color over this and, and use the brush over the same section it doesn't get any darker than before so that hopefully points out what these do now now that we have some brush strokes down we can go in here and erase and with the erase tool you brush over it and you're simply removing the brush strokes that you put down so this uh, does not change the exposure back to where it does I mean in effect it does but what you're doing is just removing this brush stroke and if you want to see exactly what's happening with these brush strokes if you go down here to show the selected mask overlay anything that's red is where I've brushed on so what I'm doing is essentially removing the red here and you can see if I leave a little bit in here and uncheck that I still have this brush stroke that was not removed in here now let's say I want to make a new brush stroke I can hit new I can also just hit enter and on this one maybe we want to uh, increase the exposure so again I can just brush it in and what are we doing here we're increasing the exposure by about one and a half stops again I can go erase this if I want to and bring it back to the normal exposure and uh, if you wanted to go in and say make some changes to this one again you can just click on it and you're back to working with these where I uh, decrease the exposure and not affecting this one where I increase the exposure also if you just hover over this pen you can see the area that's affected you don't have to go down here and click this or if you like a keyboard shortcut you can press O and that's going to show that permanently until you press O again or uncheck down here okay so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how the brush works let's go in and use it on an image and you can see a little bit better when you might want to use it so I've got this image in here of this couple walking through a meadow so let's go ahead and choose this one and what I want to do here I think they look a little underexposed and I think maybe this is a little too bright so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna increase the exposure on them and I'm going to decrease the exposure on this grass in the foreground here so I'm gonna hit K which get, pulls up my brush or I could have just gone over here and uh, let's go ahead and for increasing the exposure let's just start with about a, a half stop or so and I'm gonna I don't want it to be a hard brush so I'm gonna turn my feather up to maybe like 65 percent and I'm gonna bump up my density and my flow to a hundred and let's just start brushing this in here and see what happens and you can see that definitely makes a difference we're again increasing the exposure on uh, this area where I'm brushing in on their suits on their dress on their hair and that looks a lot better but it looks like I colored outside the lines a bit if I hit O to show my mask yep I did color out here and you can see it on the mountain here it's kind of overexposed so I don't want that there so what I'm gonna do is go to erase and I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm just gonna erase along here and if you hit O and bring up that mask you can see exactly where you need to erase instead of having to rely on uh, just doing it by eye on the exposure so I'm just gonna do a quick little job here uh, if this was for a client I'd probably be a little bit more careful but uh, this should give you the idea of what you can do with this brush and if I go down here this little toggle switch I could turn it off and on and you can see how much of a difference that made you can always increase it or decrease it if you want to but for this image I'm just gonna say that's pretty good now I do want to make another one so let's go ahead and click new and like I said I want to darken this grass just a little so let's just drop that down maybe a uh, half stop or so you can also just click in here and uh, type in whatever value you want so let's drop this by oops let's go to negative 0.5 I'm just gonna come in here brush all this in and notice I was in the erase brush when I was working on this one here As soon as I made a new brush it took me back to the apply brush and not the erase so uh, you don't have to worry about changing that back before you switch so I can just brush that in here if I hit O I can see where I've applied that and that looks pretty good uh, that might be a little strong so if I hover over here and just press the up arrow I can change that a little bit or I can also just slide this and uh, kind of stop wherever I think it looks good so now that I'm done with that if I hit enter I can uh, hit enter one more time it closes the brush uh, sub module here and I'm back to 
being able to edit my image. So hopefully that makes sense. You can see the brush is pretty powerful. Uh, the main time you'll use it is probably going to be adjust expo adjusting exposure, either increasing or decreasing. Like I said, there's a lot of other options here. If you go back into the brush, you can see we can change highlight shadows. Uh, you can use it for sharpness. You can add color. You can do all these different things that we're going to cover in a future video. For now, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction as to how the brush tool works and some really easy ways that you could use it to make your images look just a little bit better. Well, I hope you learned something. For more photography tips, head on over to photographylife.com, check out what we have to offer over there, and we'll see you next time.